Welcome back to the Wichita Toy Train Club YouTube channel. I'm Zachariah. And I'm Chris. And what do we have here today, Zach? Today we are going to take a look at Lionel's new CA1 uh, Crew Talk caboose. So the Crew Talk caboose is going to be something new Lionel cataloged in their 2023 Volume 1 catalog. Uh, we had the UP version. Uh, we actually had two UP versions. I might need a second one. I think you might. But, you know, we'll, we'll find yeah. out why <laughs> later. Um, they did two UP versions. They did a brown, and then they did um, the yellow with the red roof. Mm. And then they did some uh, Pennsylvania versions. I think they're like the N6 cabin car. Mm -hmm. I, don't quote me on that. I, I'm just going off memory here. Um, either way, it was, uh, and both molds actually were XMTH tooling. Ah, so, so purple within an orange box. Yes, yes. We got a purple caboose inside an orange box with orange electronics. <laughs> we are being very uh, uh, PC here. I had wondered why the details were so good on this. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Obviously all the purple. Obviously. <laughs> um, but no, Lionel did take it. Uh, MTH had a great caboose here, and uh, Lionel made it their own in, in their own way. Um, so I believe, I actually really don't know if these are still made in the original MTH factory because, you know, a lot of the MTH stuff, you know, the XMTH stuff with, that, you know, either Lionel or even Atlas produce, you'll still see that quality inspection sticker that MTH used to always have mm -hmm. on the underside of their stuff, and you don't see that on this particular car. Yeah. I'm not, that, not that that's a bad thing. It's just, you know, kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, huh. And the other thing is... You know, this was cataloged on the page with the Vision Line Big Boys, um, mm -hmm. along. With, I don't. I think it was with the Big Boys. I don't. Or it was with the Vision Reefers. Uh, yes, that's yeah, what it I was. So. It was with the Vision Reefers. So it was logical that this was a Vision Line caboose, mm -hmm. but this came in a orange box. Right. <laughs> it came in an orange box. Nothing says Vision Line on it. Um, I mean, it's just I like the or I like the black box. Right, it's it, very different. It, it's very different. It makes me feel special. Right, um, but I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with it. I think where the confusion was um, was I think on the Pennsylvania version, it's a Vision style caboose. Hmm. So it was Vision caboose, and that's where ah where uh -huh. where we all went off went off the deep end with it. Right. And Makes I could be wrong. I haven't looked at the catalog recently. Maybe the UP version said Vision Caboose on it, too. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so what made this Crew Talk or possibly Vision Line uh, worthy? And what that is is we've shoved sounds into a caboose. Now, this isn't the first time Lionel's done it. See, that was my next question. You obviously know more about Lionel and whatnot than <laughs> I do. So that was my next question. Is this the first sounds caboose it is not they did it back in the mid to late 90s in the tmcc days um, i don't remember what they called it then and uh, I, there were very few made i think okay um and it, it had a lot of really cool sounds in it so this is again a modern uh, version of that so what we're going to get is we're going to get a little, a little more accurate, uh, true train sounds, crew sounds than maybe what the TMCC version had. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a lot of play value in this. Uh, of course, you have, since now we have command control in it, right. we have control of the lighting. So I mean, you can turn that on, on and off with the legacy, uh, legacy remote, because why not, apparently? Uh, you, have your, uh, you have control of your classification lights or your rear marker lamps. They don't change color or anything, but you can turn them on or off. And then, uh, to just to add to it, the front coupler on the caboose is an electrocoupler. The back one is a standard operating coupler. So, that's uh, kind of neat. I think the electrocoupler is a great feature. Because if you're parking a train or you're backing, mm -hmm. your whole, switching your whole train and you're putting your caboose in its spot, and then it's like somebody got out and uncoupled it. And exactly. You don't have to bring your giant hands in there into that <laughs> world and <goop. laughs> Or, you know, have that correct, correctly positioned uncoupling right. track because it works every time and it's always where you want it to be. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it is a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a great feature and I believe that's the reason why they use the front coupler for yeah. that is because then that'll, you, you weren't going to do any switching from the rear end of the caboose. So yeah. that's, I believe that was the, the theory behind that. In most cases, yeah. 
Um, of course, you also get the regular rail sounds, the clickety clacks, you know, all the flange squealing that everybody loves. But there's one extra thing, right? There's an extra sound feature other than talking and and uh, rail, clickety clacks. Oh yes, yes yeah, there is. Uh -huh. I can't believe I forgot that. I can't believe you forgot that either. Because it's like the best <laughs> part of it. It's got an air whistle on it. <laughs> Got a little doot doot. <laughs> it's kind of like the squealing pigs and whatever. <laughs> and you know what's funny about that is it's not quilling or anything. Oh, it's not. It's not. And every time it does this little doot doot. Yeah, I thought you every, were doing nope, that. Nope. Every okay. time that's what the sound file. <laughs> and at first I was like, oh, that's kind of disappointing. But at the same time, an air whistle on the caboose, more than likely you're just using brake pipe mm -hmm. pressure. That was always going to be constant, and more likely you just had a ball valve, so it was just on or off. Is probably what most uh, crewmen did at the time. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense. Don't get me wrong. There's no reason why they couldn't have theoretically quilled that whistle, but they're all the way at the rear of the train. Nine times out of ten, they're wanting somebody further away to hear them. So mm -hmm. on, they're, uh, so they're going to be turning <laughs> that sucker on. Yeah, full blast or nothing. Now, are they going to be doing the little toot toot every time? I doubt that, but you know, we can Man. pretend. So, and out of all those features, there's one more this has, and it does have the IR sensor for the LCS sensor track. Nice. So that allows you to do a lot of other things. You can trigger recordings based off the rear end of the train. So that, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you can do with that. Um, one of the f nice things is you don't have to manually enter in all the information into the legacy controller. That's kind of the first immediate like, oh, hey, look, I didn't yeah. have to do all that work. <laughs> <laughs> it did it for me. Uh -huh. um, but that's the other thing is you can uh, trigger recordings with it. You can make it part of re a recording. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with that. Um, I'm kind of hoping Lionel reintroduces, you know, some different ideas with the center track. I know. Mm -hmm. Um, it, they really had hoped some other people would, you know, run with it and come up with the ideas, but I don't think anybody's really picked up on, you know, what you can do with the center track. So hopefully, you know, between this and maybe maybe Lionel coming out with some other information on the center track, we can uh, um, come up with some new fun things we can do with it. Oh yeah, man. I mean, this is really nice seeing it in person versus the catalog, like every, like anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they always usually great product when it comes off the line. Um, I, I being the Pensy guy and UP, you a UP guy, now seeing this, I'd really like to see how the Pensy one looks in person. Yeah. And I, maybe I need to buy, <laughs> buy the <laughs> Pensy one. Because this is really nice. I mean, the wood-sided looks great. Yes. Obviously, we've seen the wood-sided passenger cars. Yeah. And those look great. So these look just phenomenal. And it's very crisp, Union Pacific, and white on that brown body color. Mm -hmm. I think that it just looks very nice. It's very clean. It's just two colors. It's yep. not loaded with different colors or anything, you know. It's very classic UP. Very classic, yeah. And it's like it's like Chris said, it's wood sided, so you could throw some grime on it and mm -hmm. it could it could look right in place in the nineteen forties. Yeah. And I'm a big weathering guy. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to start weathering more of my stuff. And I mean, just a basic black wash on this wood would, side. Oh yeah, would make a huge difference. Oh yeah, because it, it right now, especially reflecting on light, it like anything, it just looks a little plastic. Yeah. A little yeah. plasticky, a little too plasticky for me. So then, yeah, first thing I would do is just put some black wash right in there, get all in the crevices of those wood lines, and man, this thing would look awesome. So throw a little bit of grime on the trucks. Yep. Not much, and it would just that little bit that, that you need. That little bit would make it make it look more real. Yeah. So with all that stuff that we shoved in there, the one downside is we did lose some some of our interior uh, molding in there. So it's a oh. little little hard up to the you get every you actually can still see in the windows. You can see through the windows, but all the way up to the bottom of those windows is I mean it's about flat right there because that's mm -hmm. where all the electronics are. And honestly, I think it worked out. I mean. This particular caboose has really small windows. You're not going to be looking in there really hard. Yeah. And uh, with with them being able to come up to the bottom of that, it's not like you have a fogged off window that you're like, what the yeah. heck's going on here? Right. Um, and then you still have your cupola where you can still have your guy looking out forward, watching for hot boxes and stuff like that. Man, now I wish they just put a smoke unit in there. <laughs> come on. I'm pretty sure the engineering team was like, you want us to do what? Yeah, come on, get to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we want it. <laughs> <laughs> At least I do. You know, one th you know that brings up a good point. I don't know, I don't know. You, you, I don't have very many. I might have one smoking caboose. Mm -hmm. And that's your BSA one, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I forgot about the BSA one. Two. So that makes two. I uh, have the uh, big boy commemorative caboose mm. also. So they both both of those smoke. I don't run them very often. And you know, kind of like uh, when these came out, Ryan had mentioned, you know, make, make these smoke like they truly would have been. You're really not going to see it when it's moving. Yeah. That's true. Um, because it's really, in theory, just a little coal or wood stove inside there. And once you start mm -hmm. moving, that's going to be drafting that so fast you you're yeah. not going to see nothing coming out of there yeah um so i mean it, i mean not like a thick plume of smoke right right it's not working that hard like the front end right <laughs> it's not there, there's not a big steam boiler in yeah. there and you're expelling steam or anything like that so that's true i kind of get the idea but it was also really cool to have smoke that's a good uh, 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 excuse to not put a smoke <laughs> unit in there. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what that's it was. That's what I'm hearing, but <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> well, I think this is about everything that we can think to talk about on this thing, don't you, Chris? Yeah, I agree. There's uh, not much to talk about for good reason. <laughs> Just the tail end of the train. That's right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get out of the way here. Thanks for coming in, watching our video. Don't forget... Um, go ahead and hit a like that really helps out mm -hmm. and uh, thanks for subscribing and we'll go ahead and go to the layout and uh, see what this thing sounds like let us know what you think below see you next time over here at the layout now we got uh, the caboose out here uh, no train yet we're just gonna go ahead and go over some of the operation of the caboose uh, when you get it you read the manual uh, I haven't read it disappointment as well as I probably should had because there's a lot of different sequences you can get out of this um, but when you do get it, or when you run it over your center track, it'll have you program it as a uh, passenger car. So that's, that'll be the first step once you get it in there. I have this one programmed as uh, engine 25. Go ahead and turn on track power here. There's track power. As you can see, it comes up completely dark. I'll go ahead and go to engine 25, and we'll go ahead and blow the whistle. And like I, we were talking earlier, it does that little toot toot every time. And there's no specific quilling on it. But we'll go ahead, and I believe that we, there are, whether or not you press aux one or you don't press aux one, you can get some, get some either when the train is getting ready to leave or when the train is pulled into the, new, into the yard and they're getting ready to go ahead and cut the train and uh, go in for the night. So we'll see what we can get here. Did you get the orders from the office? Got them. The usual speed restrictions up on the hill. They got a tie gang just out east of Springfield. And we got an extra pickup today there too. We might be on the law this trip. I don't like the look of that load we're picking up. I agree. Double check those tie downs and put it back here next to the cabin so we can keep an eye on it. Throw a few more stones in the stove. It's getting chilly in here. We're ready on the big end. We gotta get moving if we're gonna make schedule. So that whole thing was just one sequence. You get a lot of background sounds and uh, it's, it's a, a whole conversation of the crew there in the caboose. So we did get one repeated conversation there. I think it's just pulling random clips and it just so happened to pull two clips. Um, we'll go ahead and hit a different one, see if we get any different sounds here real quick. How the bills look? A mess. I hope whoever blocked this train did a better job sorting than that blasted yard clerk. Tom Hogan today. You 
know what that means. Yeah, we'll be done in record time and hitting the app for hard tonight. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit aux one, see if we get something different here. If we don't, we'll go ahead and uh, hook it up to the train and uh, see if we get anything different while we're going down the rails. I'll pull on the markers. You gather the paperwork. Glad this runs over. So we do get a couple of different uh, sequences there. Uh, not hitting aux one, you get your pre-trip stuff. Hitting aux one, you get your uh, post-trip uh, dialogue there. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll go ahead and hook it up to the train here. Don't know if you guys can see it. If we hit the F uh, button here on our controller, I'll go ahead and throw our front coupler there. Put it back. You can see our. Well, I guess you really can't, but it's there. Front coupler there. It throws open, and uh, we do have lighting control, of course. The indoor lights shut on and off, or we can come in here and uh, turn everything on and off. I thought I said earlier you could control the marker lamps whether they are on or off, but I don't know that that's actually true. I've never hit that button before. That was the aux three button. That was kind of a cool <laughs> sequence. I'm finding things out as we are recording this. It looks like you can just control the indoor lighting on and off in the it, aux two shuts all the lights on and off. Fun fact, we'll go ahead and hook it up to the train. Here's the caboose hooked to the train here. Uh, I go ahead. I got this all programmed as train 28. I will note there. I've had the occasional problem with after I put this into the train. You'll notice um, if I go back into the train that my marker lights will go out. And the only way I've been able to fix that is go in, reprogram the caboose, and then reset it into the train. And each time that's worked and it works properly like it should. I don't know why it does that, but if you have that problem, that's what I found fixes it. Other than that, we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can get a pre-trip sequence, and we will move on out. All our papers are in order. Yard boss says we're good down on the east end. Let's get rolling while I call for signals. I don't like the look of that load we're picking up. I agree. Double check those tie downs and put it back here next to the cabin so we can keep an eye on it. Thank you. 
Thank you. 